feel that we've got most people on? Yes, we are. Now let's start recording. Starting the record now. So with no, without further ado, over to you, Gary, as the host. Okay, brilliant. Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to the latest in our series of webinars featuring the Built for NetSuite partners. So today we're delighted to be joined by Jitterbit. Uh, this is a global API integration platform that can develop with your business and prevent you being overwhelmed by complex integrations. We joined on the webinar today uh, by Daniel Fox and Maria Palceska uh, from the Gisbit team. Now you're going to be delivering their talk, a proven approach to NetSuite integration. So if you've got any questions during the webinar, please pop them in the chat provided, or you can message one of us directly. We'll go through them. There is a question and answer segment later in the session, and we will keep them uh, an eye on the questions as they come in, in case there's something uh, pertinent that, uh, that, that, that needs answering straight away. Uh, finally, as you've uh, just heard, we are recording the session, so um, I'm going to turn my webcam off at this point, and uh, unless you want to be forever on uh, YouTube, uh, you can do the same. And um, that's about it in terms of intro. I shall hand over now to uh, Daniel and uh, Maria, and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, thanks, Gary. Um, nice to meet you all. I'm Maria Polcheska. I'm the account executive here at uh, Jitterbit, been with the company for the last four years. And uh, yeah, today we want to focus on NetSuite and uh, NetSuite integrations to all different systems that different companies have. And uh, yeah, we also prepared a, de a demo for you. Um, so hopefully we'll have an interactive session, uh, especially at the end, we reserve some time for Q&A. Um, so yeah, good to meet you all and looking forward to it. Um, over to you, Dan. Yeah, hi guys. Thank you very much. My name is Daniel Volks. I'm a sales engineer at Jitterbit, which means that I deal with mostly the technical sides of the integrations, understanding some of the use cases that people have, uh, and then fundamentally trying to apply what Jitterbit does to those use cases to uh, find a holistic solution to uh, achieving uh, the right level of, of data migration uh, and integration as well. Um, back to you, Maria, I suppose. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Um, a quick introduction from you, Barry, as well. I think you're the last one. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, yeah, I'm sitting at the back of the room. Hi, everyone. Morning. It's Barry Flaherty here. I'm the Alliances Director here in the UK for just a bit working with Brightbridge and partners to, to grow our ecosystem here. So I've been with the company 10 years. Done a lot of NetSuite integrations myself in that time as well. But today I'm handing over the reins to Maria and Daniel to take it forward and look forward to your questions later. Fantastic. Thanks, Barry. So, yeah, I think we'll start with a brief overview of, of the company as well and what is our expertise around NetSuite and uh, how our customers, um, you know, typically see how we typically see our customers working with, with Jitterbit. So I'll switch to my slide deck. Um, hope everyone can see my screen now. Uh, yeah, so um, yeah, we'll start with the, the, the company profile um, and a little bit about our customer base and how we see um, joint, joint journey, potentially your joint journey with us and uh, Brightbridge as well. Uh, then we'll move to um, to the Harmony platform uh, just to give you a little bit of an idea how, how the product looks and works. Um, and then we have prepared the tailored NetSuite um, Shopify demo and we'll leave some time for a Q&A uh, at the very end. Uh, yeah, so just to start with, um, we are an uh, integration and API company. However, in the last um, two years, we started to call, call ourselves a hyper automation company with uh, given the different acquisitions that we made. Um, initially, however, we grew together with Salesforce. So a Salesforce invested in Jitterb twice. Um, and that was back in uh, 2003 um, up to uh, 2010. And then from, from last 10 years, we really um, yeah, grew our relations with other strategic ecosystems where uh, um, Oracle is one of them. So um, as we see uh, different projects coming uh, to us, um, we see uh, NetSuite Oracle being one of the top five requirements. Uh, in terms of different integrations. So we work with um, NetSuite uh, on a regular basis. Uh, even yesterday, I um, I received a new project from the NetSuite UK team, and we have those relations across uh, all different regions in EMEA, uh, as well as globally. Um, so um, I know that our team in, in the US uh, attended SuiteWord uh, yesterday as well. 
Um, so um, definitely a uh, long-standing relationship there. Uh, beyond that, uh, we also work with uh, strategic ecosystems such as SAP, Microsoft, uh, obviously still continuing our relation with Salesforce as well. Um, Salesforce still uses us as a, a internal solution to run, of, uh, run some of, of the integrations. Um, and we uh, obviously uh, see Salesforce uh, products uh, very often in our, uh, in our projects. Um, in terms of the, um, the, the profile, uh, we also uh, are present in uh, uh, over 60 countries. Currently, uh, most of our teams are um, yeah, working remotely due to obviously COVID circumstances. However, we have local uh, um, offices in, uh, in APAC, in Melbourne, in EMEA, that's Utrecht in the Netherlands. However, um, again, most of our team sits in the UK. Um, so uh, really end-to-end um, -end, um, uh, support uh, from you know, a sales development team to um, sales team, pre-sales team, technical teams, uh, all located in the UK, uh, and also uh, Germany, the Netherlands, um, Spain. Uh, recently, we, we um, have a couple of employees there as well. So um, yeah, we have quite uh, extensive uh, reach across, uh, across EMEA. Um, and then uh, again, majority of our, um, uh, of our companies is still uh, US-based as well. Uh, so if you look at different uh, industry reports, we score very highly on uh, customer satisfaction and overall the, the IPAS uh, space, so integration platform as a service. Um, we've been the, named a leader uh, in Gartner Magic Quadrant in that space for a number of years in a row. And then also we score very highly in G2 Crowd and Forrester Way. And uh, with our recent investor, Odex Group, we've been acquiring a lot of uh, companies um, and uh, we are planning to, to continue uh, in that direction because we, tr we look to enhance our product and also uh, grow teams with expertise around certain, uh, certain areas. So for instance, um, back, in, uh, back in 2019, we acquired uh, EI Cloud, which is uh, a product from a company called eBridge. Uh, obviously, it's now called Jitterbit, but this really allowed us to add the EDI capabilities in, into our product, which we obviously previously also did uh, within Harmony, but now uh, we can uh, have this uh, yeah, cloud-based uh, solution in there as well. Um, I guess, um, yeah, worth adding, so uh, beyond the, the EDI part, we also have the App Builder. So App Builder is a low-code uh, application development solution, which certainly can help to hyper-automate different processes. Uh, this means if you have data uh, in different formats and CSV files, spreadsheets, you can uh, expose the data uh, by building application, which is very helpful. Um, so while companies typically have uh, systems like NetSuite, Salesforce, um, uh, e-commerce platform, there is still, uh, to some extent, there is still uh, work um, in, on spreadsheets. Um, so with App Builder, you can get rid of uh, all of this manual and uh, spreadsheets uh, type of type of tasks. So that's that's always helpful. Um, again, EDI, uh, I think we are the only current vendor having uh, EDI capabilities within the IPAS uh, solution. So um, that's um, that's a big selling point for us as well. Um, then we have Cloud Studio. Uh, Cloud Studio is uh, the main component of our product where you can actually build your integrations to NetSuite um, and uh, other systems as well. Um, and then uh, the API manager allowing you to um, create and expose your own APIs, allowing um, also to create event-based triggered um, integration uh, as well. Um, in terms of different pre-built assets, um, um, for, for NetSuite being one of our um, top five systems that we are working with, um, Daniel will show you in a second, we have lots of pre-built assets. Uh, obviously, we have also a uh, best-in-class uh, Oracle NetSuite connector. Uh, however, we also have different templates and integration recipes, which are available for all of our customers in the uh, in the platform in a place so-called marketplace. Um, so for instance, if you are looking at uh, e-commerce integration, um, you can uh, uh, utilize uh, some of the templates, uh, for instance, to uh, Shopify or uh, Magento or BigCommerce. And then uh, for instance, switch. Um, so if you decide to move from one e-commerce platform to another, you can still 
uh, utilize these thanks to uh, to the common models that are incorporated into um, all all different integrations um, that are built in in harmony. And this typically also allows our clients to save uh, fifty to eighty percent of the implementation time. So um, this is also a very important metric to us. Um, basically, being able to um, achieve your results in a short period of time. Uh, this is how we typically see um, our clients working. So time to value, time to market are key metrics for us. Uh, within Jitterbeat integration can be built within hours. Um, so hopefully that's something that Daniel will show you uh, in a second. But um, yeah, the, the, the project that we will be presenting was built within hours. Um, this is an example integration between uh, Shopify and NetSuite. Um, and then um, on, on average, um, um, our clients go live within the first 30 days and achieve a uh, return on investment within uh, 12 months. So again, uh, yeah, that's um, that's how we see, see them progressing. Um, and also, I think it's the, the typical pattern would be to um, uh, distinguish different phases of your project. So maybe start with e-commerce integration, however, then uh, spread the use of Jitterbit across different business areas, different use cases, for instance, uh, sales and finance. Uh, so we would typically see uh, our clients working in, uh, in this phased approach. Um, also, I think you know the low code, uh, no code con concept means uh, basically spend less and less time on uh, building integrations. So uh, when, um, yeah, in case that's your teams or maybe that's uh, something that you will be doing with Brightbridge, uh, the goal is to make these uh, integrations easy uh, and uh, not not definitely not time consuming. Uh, which also allows them to save costs uh, on the implementation side and uh, in terms of also uh, hours uh, spent uh, building uh, integrations. So uh, the platform is definitely a no-code, uh, low-code concept. Also with the different tools that you have in Harmony, um, again, uh, LCAP, so low-code application development solution, uh, EDI platform, um, Cloud Studio, um, this uh, should uh, allow you also to limit the number of um, different third parties that you, you may have been using in the past. Um, so typically companies would build some point-to-point -point integrations, may maybe internally uh, built by, by someone who worked uh, at a company, uh, by a developer, then uh, some other integrations would be uh, maybe built by, by third parties. And then uh, whenever things would, would stop working, um, that there is this whole chain of uh, communication trying to find out who, who built a, a particular integration, how does it work. Uh, at Jitterbit, you have uh, all-in-one solution, so hopefully also avoiding uh, um, yeah, this, this type of uh, situation as well. Uh, in terms of um, the NetSuite, our NetSuite uh, customer base, uh, we work with all different uh, types of companies of different profiles, as you can see here. Um, I think currently we have over 200 uh, clients using NetSuite. Uh, fun fact is that uh, Jitterbit can be, <laughs> we can be our own reference. So um, Jitterbit uses NetSuite internally as well um, to run automation between finance and, and sales uh, uh, operations as well. Um, so, um, yeah, it's certainly uh, our bread and butter. Um, and then, um, yeah, I guess, you know, beyond the what, what you can find in Harmony in terms of pre-built assets to NetSuite, um, you can also connect uh, via our generic HTTP connector to any system. So uh, any cloud on, or on-premise application. Um, so, uh, yeah, typically companies would have a legacy system or custom built system uh, that uh, yeah we wouldn't necessarily find the pre-built connector on the market, but you can uh, utilize the generic connector to connect and and, and integrate with that. Um, so yeah, typically um, our clients again would start maybe with one or two automations around e-commerce and sales. However, then move uh, move beyond that uh, across uh, you know collaboration channels. Um, digital asset management. So um, definitely very scalable, very flexible tool as well. Um, in terms of the, the journey with us, um, so Brightbridge is obviously our uh, partner for years. And uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's also Brightbridge typically 
um, it's, it's uh, someone that you've been working with uh, possibly for, for years uh, as well. So uh, typically there is a preference to obviously work and, and buy from someone that, that you know. Um, but uh, again, Brightbridge comes with uh, years of integration experience, uh, always working very closely with Jitterbeat. So we, we share a joint um, client base as part of this package um, that uh, we are offering together with Brightbridge and, and positioning. Um, we would uh, always have also a dedicated uh, assigned customer success manager uh, from our side. Um, also, you will be working directly with our team. So for instance, with me and Daniel. Um, and we don't really distinguish like post uh, pre-sale and post-sale process. Uh, we actually... I um, think this is a, a joint uh, a journey. Um, so on average, uh, even though the, the licenses within Jitterbit are uh, yearly licenses, typically uh, we would uh, see this as a, at least four year partnership. This is how all the processes here at Jitterbit are, are designed um, to, to stay um, and, and work together for at least uh, four years. So uh, we will be definitely helping also to build a phased approach uh, uh, unless it's a really a uh, small project, so maybe just two systems, but typically um, businesses of, of this type of profile um, have multiple integration requirements. So we would um, yeah, advise during the, the, the cycle on how to build your integration, how to um, uh, scope them, um, how to break them down into phases, and then uh, together with the customer success manager from our side, um, we would support a bright bridge uh, on a regular basis to to deliver also uh, these integrations that you you have uh, uh, you have planned for. Um, so yeah, I think this is um, yeah this is working really well. And as you can see here, uh, we have uh, yeah joint customer base um, since since years. Uh, so uh, we started this program in 2016, um, and obviously uh, we are adding to that regularly. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, a very convincing uh, uh, point for, for many businesses is just to have one partner as a one-stop shop uh, type of approach. So not only a partner for integration, which that's that's where uh, Jitterbit can serve as, as this trusted partner, but also someone who can stay uh, locally, support you locally, uh, and also uh, help on the implementation side. For some use cases, uh, you may also um, you may also want to look at uh, maybe our um, services. We have different services, uh, for instance, for clients that would grow to a certain extent. We can um, provide uh, managed integration services where you can outsource some parts of your project uh, uh, and have us uh, helping, um, so you you don't have to uh, spend time um, maintaining those integrations. So. A lot of different services available. However, um, having uh, Brightbridge as your first point of contact, it's uh, I think it's a uh, yeah, great benefit for uh, for many businesses as well. Um, so this is just a short introduction um, to 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 what we've been doing and why we are here. Um, I will now hand over to Daniel for the platform presentation and uh, the demo as well. So uh, over to you, Dan. Thank you very much. Two seconds while I figure out how to share my screen, which always seems to be a bit of a challenge. Um, right. Let me know whether you guys can see my screen all right. Just a heads up from somebody would be nice. Um, and then we can get cracking. Yeah, I can see it. Perfect. Okay. So um, uh, first of all, thanks, Maria, for, for that overview, um, which is which is great, made my job a lot easier, which is also great. Um, but I also think that, that what's really important before you start um, talking about uh, integration and, and uh, data migration in, in a bit more detail, it's, it's to ensure that the company that you're dealing with um, has the right certifications and um, uh, uh, well, right compliance with regards to cybersecurity. So, um, but before we dive into or before I dive into the platform and, and a little bit more what we do, I just want to make sure that, um, you know, we are fully ISO 27001 compliant. We have SOC 1 and SOC uh, Type 2 uh, compliance as well. And uh, because, as Maria has already mentioned, we're based in uh, the uh, EU, we, we are also compliant with uh, GDPR. We have data centers that reside in Frankfurt as a primary data center with a fallback data center in Dublin as well for, for redundancy. So there's a lot of information um, on, on how the platform is actually built. It was built with 
with the with the principles of security and and privacy by design uh, and we do have a very good security white paper so if you do have a data protection officer or compliance officer or, or even a legal department that will need to understand a little bit more about that uh, it's uh, it's worth reading that security uh, white paper it also details a little bit um how we're a company that deals with data in transit rather than uh, persist any data um at at rest um now that's that's the the, the least exciting bit uh, done with in, in some eyes. Um, what I want to do first is sort of talk a little bit about uh, just a bit on a conceptual level, which is sort of helping you understand a, a bit what, what iPass is or integration platform as a service. Um, and essentially what we do, we enable you to connect your system, migrate and enrich your data and orchestrate that that integration then uh, by means of either a real-time uh, uh, trigger, which which can be done through, through a just a bit produced API uh, or on a schedule. Um, now, how do we actually go and connect into those systems is, is, is also fascinating piece um, in, in my opinion which is we have a set of connectors um, and those connectors are split into sort of three categories uh, one of which is, is native connectors and, and fundamentally these native connectors are uh, the uh, APIs or en encapsulation of the APIs that big systems or um, such as NetSuite and Shopify provide we then have uh, generic connectors, which are fundamentally uh, connect uh, the connectors that allow you to establish uh, connectivity to things like databases or FTP servers, or even uh, HTTP-based uh, 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 web services uh, or, or SOAP-based web services. And then we have custom connectors as well. Now, um, we often find ourselves in in what, what we uh, internally call a connector war, where we're saying, hey, this platform has this connector and this platform has these connectors, but I'm missing this connector. Um, and so, so one of the things that was really important to us was that we follow this principle of any system, any process. And the way that we can follow that is that we actually allow you to go and build out a custom connector as well, which utilizes um, the, the uh, uh, generic connector, generic HTTP connector. And then we allow you to go and build out your own um, uh, connector that you can then reutilize across your various different integration processes. Um, now, one of the other things that's that's uh, important to, to 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 understand about those connectors is once you you've configured those, uh, and again, this is a really easy um, uh, thing to do as well. Is there's not there's no coding involved or anything like that. But once you, we we configured those connectors, what those connectors produce is is um, associated activities. So these activities can also vary from system to system. Uh, now, for instance, with NetSuite, we 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 base that connector. A best-in-class connector on 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 the whistles that they produce, and then we can see the various different activities that are associated to the API calls. The other great thing here is that um, because we base our connectivity on the APIs that those big systems provide, um, our connectors can do something called introspection, where we actually can inspect the uh, individual instances of 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 NetSuite or, or Shopify or Salesforce, and can see whether there's any custom uh, fields that that can be uh, worked with as well. So we know that NetSuite hardly ever comes as 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 just just a vanilla implementation, but there's always some customization there, which is brilliant, and that's what the platform should be used for. But we also need to make sure, therefore, that when you are trying to integrate between various different systems, that you can carry that uh, uh, customization and really allow to, uh, a tool to 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 integrate the data that that uh, is um, unique to your to your business uh, in in, um, in in that regard. Um, now, uh, the, the the other thing that I think is is, is worth mentioning um, with regards to Jitterbit is that uh, the way that we work with with specific data as well. So when you have built out uh, uh, or your connectivity or established connectivity to your different systems, what you want to know is, is can I move all my different uh, uh, pieces of data as well, regardless of what format they, they they're in, and that's certainly something that we can do. But on top of that as well, which which I think Maria briefly touched upon earlier, we actually allow you to go embrace modern integration methodologies. And uh, some of those things could be uh, things like uh, virtual data hubs, as Gartner calls them, or common models, where you go and establish the um, the, uh, the the data model that you need that best suits the needs of the business, and then you can map data to that data model. And when that um, integration is then run, all the data that uh, is is pulled out of a a source data system such as NetSuite can then be passed through this data model um, at, at runtime, which means when, when the operation is happening, map that data into that uh, centralized uh, data model, 
and then from there pass it to different target systems. The reason why that's really important is that you first of decouple your systems and by decoupling your systems, you make sure that they don't need to necessarily know about each other, um, which, which is great for security reasons. But it also means that when you decouple your systems, you can much more easily scale your integration landscape. So you can more easily add new systems or take away systems uh, that, that that are either uh, targets, so that means where data is being sent, or source data systems where, where uh, data originates uh, from as well. Now, the other thing that we allow you to do as part of that integration workflow is work with APIs as well. So when we're talking about working with APIs, you can either utilize Jitterbit APIs, and those Jitterbit APIs, we essentially allow you to go and expose the integration workflow that, that you've created between two uh, or, or more systems uh, to be called as an API, so you can trigger it real time. Or we also allow you to work with public facing APIs. Now, um, it's uh, to touching back on that, that co common model approach is when you work with public facing APIs, you might want to do that because um, you, you may want to use something like a currency converter or a language converter um, because you need to enrich and work with that data so that when it arrives in your target system, it's exactly in the shape and form that you want it to be and you want it to be consistently. So using the common model again, uh, if you have, for instance, a customer that uh, or, or an order that originates in, in, uh, in a Shopify instance in the UK, but for whatever reason you have a NetSuite instance that's uh, that that operates in in euros and that's that's based in Germany. What you can do is you can, uh, as part of your your integration workflow, is map data through this common model. As part of that common model, call a public API, which is uh, um, something like a currency converter, exchange that currency on the fly with the latest exchange rate, and then make sure that when it arrives in NetSuite, it's exactly in the A currency that you need, but also the with, with the um, uh, appropriate exchange rate applied to it. So that's some of the other things uh, that, that, that we can, uh, can do. Uh, the next bit that, that I just quickly will touch upon is that we are actually uh, IT agnostic. And what, what do I mean by IT agnostic is, well, we understand that data resides in lots of different places, um, not just in the cloud, although I think a lot of us would, would wish that everything was cloud-based. It, it isn't. Um, and now, fundamentally, you, you have some data that can also sit on, on premise as well. So uh, we, we have a bit of technology that I'll talk about in, in a little bit, which is our agent technology. And that essentially allows uh, you to, to integrate with, with on-premise systems as well. So uh, to talking a little bit more about the, the, the platform as well, um, again, the, the, what Maria earlier said as well, which is, which is great, is sort of that, that Jitterbit's vision is really to, to sort of uh, empower anyone to sort of hyper-automate the different processes across the different systems and uh, making work more frictionless, faster and better. And that's um, very well worded by our marketing department. But um, jokes aside, it's, it's, I, I, we believe that there's several components that really allow you to go and embrace the, this idea of hyper-automation. Um, and at Jitterbit, we used to say, well, there's two things that we do really well, which is build integrations um, and then expose those integrations or any of the data that um, is, is produced as a consequence of that integration as an API for people to consume. But expectantly, and through uh, the, the acquisitions that Maria already mentioned, is we've continued to grow that list of things that we do exception well. And that that that, um, uh, that 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 list of things that we do well included that app, uh, low code application platform, the app builder that Maria mentioned. Uh, it included uh, acquiring another iPass provider, which which uh, again grew our experience and and uh, uh, knowledge base in and around the iPass space exponential uh, exponentially. Um, and then the other the other part that Maria has also mentioned is that EDI platform, which essentially allows our users to solve or the users of the platform to pass EDI documents to any trading partner regardless of whether it's X12 or any fact format, um, which again is something that, that um, is, is still uh, uh, highly required nowadays. Um, now, I, I just, just in terms of what you're seeing on the screen at, at the moment, um, essentially um, the, the, the platform comes equipped with, with these sort of different functionalities, which, which again, we will, I'll show you in a little bit. But um, uh, and that that's sort of at the user interface layer, which is where you go and um, 
and uh, build out your different integrations as well in that low code, no code fashion. But that all then comes uh, uh, is, is, is connected to our underlying platform through our microservices layer. Now, for those of you who are, who are, who are a little bit technical will understand what, what that means. Uh, those who, who don't, it is essentially the APIs that Jitterbit have themselves to be able to go and, um, and to do all the different wonderful integration pieces. The most important part from this slide that I want you to take away, or however, is that platform layer right at the bottom. Um, and that platform is, is essentially how is Jitterbit uh, put together. Uh, and so the things that Jitterbit ships with is, is an API gateway. And that gateway essentially allows you to throttle and secure and validate any incoming and outbound connections and payloads as well. So um, to give you an example, if for instance, you have a customer that needs to query some data from you, or you have a set of customers that need to query data from you, you can assign different uh, profiles to those customers. Uh, and then you can also reduce the, uh, the, the the amount of times that they might be able to call the API that you've given to them. You might have some customers you like more than others. So uh, you simply say, hey, you can call this API 50 times. The other one you like an awful lot more, you can say, hey, you can call this API 100 times. And obviously, that's not how, how how it would work in in uh, in reality by, by, by virtue of how much you like a customer, but that's fundamentally the idea Idea that you can assign different prof, uh, profiles. The platform then also comes with a messaging component that actually routes those incoming payloads uh, to, uh, and uh, sort of tracks the retries as well. And uh, we, we will be pushing out a message queue uh, later this year. Again, that's something that you could come talk to us now. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, reserve that uh, for a little bit later. And then the, 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 the big part uh, of, of the platform is that agent technology that, that I touched upon earlier as well. And that is actually what goes and, and, and builds those into uh, uh, is, is um, it's a bit of software that executes those integration at runtime that connects to your various different systems and that handles that mapping uh, component as well. And uh, it's, it's orchestrated through um, uh, through whether uh, it's, it's on a schedule or uh, being called by an API. Um, in, in terms of uh, the, the, the final thing, and I've got two slides before we actually get into the exciting thing, which is which is showing you uh, the demo, but but the two slides I'm going to show you, one is still focused on the platform, the other is a bit more focused on, on, on the workflow that I'm going to show you. But um, as, as I already said, uh, we understand that NetSuite, you have something that's marvelous, that lives in the cloud, fully fledged SaaS ERP system, which is great, but but we also know that, that you can't have, um, uh, that not every business is as fortunate to have uh, uh, cloud-based applications still and and will still have some sort of legacy system uh, uh on which the business is heavily de uh, dependent uh installed on premise or even because you have some um, strict or industry specific uh, data regulations data is often not allowed to simply go and leave uh, your, your on-premise system so we we really think that businesses shouldn't be punished just because they can't uh, um, um, you know embrace cloud technology and therefore um we, we don't want to preclude them from sort of embracing digital transformation through integration and so we still allow you to actually go and build out integrations with uh, with your on-premise systems those agents can then uh, which which uh, again if we remember are the pieces that actually go and execute those integrations the way uh, is that 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 if you have a full cloud deployment um, that that's really simple and easy to set up that takes about uh, 10 minutes and you can start building out integrations between your different cloud-based applications but if you have for instance a, a database that still sits on premise or a legacy system what what we would do is, uh, or the, uh, what, what you can do is, you would install an agent on on uh, on on a system on a local system that has uh, access to uh, that 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 uh, um, that, that on-premise system. Uh, the agent can be installed on Windows or Linux or even um, managed with with Docker for those of you who know that or, or Kubernetes. Um, and, and then essentially what we allow you to do is, is establish connectivity out to the cloud platform over HTTPS um, and, uh, and uh, through, through WebSockets. Again, that's something that we can talk uh, in a bit more detail about from, from a techie side. Uh, and, and essentially what, what we say is, um, is that we don't, uh, we, we fully encrypt data in transit and we don't persist any data, which I think is also really, really important uh, uh, point to make. We, we don't actually care what data you're shipping. We care about the structure of the data. So what are the fields? How do you, do you want it mapped? And where do you want it sent? That's what we care about. Everything else is in an envelope. It's just uh, um, the, the payload. We, we, we don't want to look at it. Um, it doesn't matter to us. It's of no consequence of, of the integration workflow. Um, obviously, you can work with the data and you, and you can look at it and inspect it um, when, when you're building out your integration in a, in a, in a development environment. But fundamentally, when 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 this integration then is uh, running, 
uh, in production, it's uh, it's it. We, you don't need to um, inspect it in in any shape or form, and just have it consistently run. So the final thing I'm going to then quickly talk about is to just give you a bit of a and and again I promise that this is my last slide before we jump into the platform is to just give you a bit of an overview of of the uh, integration workflow that that I've I've built for today. I wanted to make sure that I show something that is uh, potentially useful, but also very quick and and to show you how quickly you can actually achieve quite. Quite impressive results with with Jitterbit. So one of the things that I wanted to do is say, hey, um, what if I have a, 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 a Shopify um, instance and I wanted to take a customer or customers from that Shopify instance, map them through Jitterbit or connect to that Shopify instance, then take that data from um, Shopify, map it through my, um, my my mapping engine or transformation engine. Uh, set it as a um, as a, into a common model, and from there I wanted to feed two different uh, target systems. One of those target systems is uh, NetSuite. The other target system is a database. And uh, now I, I, I know that I've I've got experience with Jitterbit. I've been building uh, demos for for quite some uh, time. But the real power here is that I was able to build a workflow like this out, or by not being fully uh, uh, um, production ready within about an hour or so. If I want to make Make this workflow production ready it would probably take me another two hours to refine make sure there's some error handling in there as well and all that wonderful stuff but the reality is um if this is something that you currently do manual um and 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 you, you worry about things like data duplication or uh, uh you know wrongful entry or or even missing out certain customers that need to be mapped across um you don't have to worry about those sort of manual interventions anymore, and you can fundamentally um, speed up a process like this with Jitterbit, make sure that it's and, and have it reliable and then also have it um, enter data into different systems as well, which I think is um, is, is is hopefully and you'll agree is, is, is really powerful. So um, I'm going to find my stop sh my, sh my um, sharing button for a second, wherever that's disappeared, uh, and then I'm going to try and uh, quickly stop sharing this, and then I'll get into the other platform. So if you bear with me for for another quick second, um, this is always the, the the fun part, right? Where here we are. Okay, so you should now still be able to see my screen. Maybe Maria can get me a heads up if if you can't. Um, otherwise, yeah. I will continue. Thank Brilliant. You. Okay, so you can see my screen now. So what you see here is actually the Jitterbit Harmony platform, and this is as as we've 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 talked about a little bit earlier, where you go and build out those integrations. Um, Maria has also mentioned it uh, earlier briefly. It's it's also where you can go and uh, and build out uh, different sort of um, business process applications where where currently those. Um, those uh, the data that, that you're working with or those management systems reside to some extent on 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 spreadsheets and are run with with VBA so you can go build out uh, business process applications as well uh, but there's a couple of other wonderful things that, that that I'll touch upon before we jump into the platform in and of itself the first thing I'll do is just scroll to the bottom here and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll get to the exciting bit right at the end um essentially Jitterbit comes with a university and that allows you to get certified on the platform as well which is really good because the, the 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 big part here is that in in over the last 10 years we actually have a a, a low in technical talent that's available across the board so uh, what's what's become a big trend and this is something that that Gartner has predicted as well that by 2024 um 80% of innovation within a business is actually going to come from business or business technologies and business technologies are people that aren't developers or aren't somebody that's uh, that's that's traditionally trained in IT but fundamentally those people that work with different processes that can be automated or, uh, or or systemized in one way um, or another as well. So that could be, for instance, a technical business analyst or, 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 or somebody else that's working in, in data analytics. So those type of people will actually be the people that will go and build out innovation. Now, we and a big part of our platform is that it's low code, no code. So through that Jitterbit University training, which can take for the for the for the basic course something like eight hours or a little bit longer for for the more advanced courses. You can in a really quick and and uh, way get get up and running and actually have a workforce that's empowered to go and build in, uh, integrations that again help you embrace that that uh, digital transformation as well. Um, the other things is uh, that I'll quickly touch upon here are um, uh, the Success Central, which is sort of then um, you, everyone still needs some guidance towards how can we actually go and and uh, build certain integrations or work with certain ecosystems, particularly 
specifically something like NetSuite. So fundamentally, this is where you can jump in and say, hey, can you uh, uh, show me and tell me a little bit what I need to do in order to get my integration up and running? Um, jumping back to the to the to the top, then uh, Cloud Studio we touched upon, or Maria's touched upon, which is this is where you go build out your your integrations, and I'll show you a project in, in a minute. You can maybe already see it. that's in the top left hand corner here. The a API Manager is where, in four simple steps, you can go and expose an integration uh, that sits within the Cloud Studio um, uh, uh, to be called. So um, again, have it real time or not. Uh, we then have the app builder. Like I said, that's that's where you can go build out a, a no code app. So there's no coding involved in this and you can build out a, a um, application, something like a, a an invoice tracker or even employee onboarding tools, anything that has the words of management system in it. In, in, to some extent you can, or information management system, you can build out with, with app builder. We then have a marketplace that comes equipped with some templates for, for pre-built integrations. We have a lot, for instance, for Shopify and, and, and NetSuite integrations where you can move inventory items and, and customers and, and, and sales orders across and, and sync all of those up. And then we have the management console. And the management console is where you can go and install those agents which, which execute those integrations at runtime. If, if you have on-premise systems, this is where you can download them. If you don't, this is all that you need. You don't need to set up anything else. And this is also where you go and set up your different environments where you can then have a, uh, a development environment where you can first build your integration workflow in that no-code, low-code way. And then uh, you can move that through to production. So I've talked a lot about the, the top level of this. I'm gonna jump into this uh, integration project and give you a bit of an overview of what we're doing and how we're doing uh, and what you're seeing on the screen. So on the left-hand side, you see your integration workflow, uh, and an integration workflow is made up of several different things. Uh, one of those is a, a integration operation, which is one of these wonderful gray boxes here. And for each one uh, uh, of these gray boxes, you will also have these uh, other squares in there, which, which are your components. And those components are essentially the various different activities that you need in order to go and build your integration. Now, all of this is drag and drop, so you can see I can change that around. If I would change that around, it, it would break, uh, but there is some validity also that we uh, prescribe with regards to how an integration should look. So for instance, if I did that, you can see that it highlights uh, as uh, as red saying, hold on, this isn't quite right. And I couldn't actually deploy and run this. So I'll just change this back to where it was uh, because I don't want to um, uh, have have that have that uh, break as well. Um, and then uh, in and so, so what we have here is again, that integration workflow where, um, and I'll, I'll touch upon this in a second. Uh, but before I do that, we're going to just jump over to the right hand side of the screen where we have the connectivity panel. And that connectivity panel is where you actually go and interact with those connectors that, that I spoke um, earlier about as well. And those connectors, as I said, are simply click and configure. So for NetSuite, um, if I if I show you here, this is some of the information that I require in order to get access to, uh, to NetSuite. So some of the information that you can provide, you can save this information and also in variables. Variables are essentially um, short-term stores for, for, for information. The reason why this is really, really important to, um, to, to look at is if you're moving your um, environment between, or if you're moving your integration workflow between different environments, you can be sure that that essentially uh, all you have to do is uh, update this information instead of having to write it out every single time as well. So um, once you then have configured your connector, you can see the different activities that are associated. I'm already using one of these activities here, which is a, a create activity and I'm creating customers. So to jump back into the workflow, then what we're actually doing here, as I said, is we're querying a customer from uh, Shopify. We're then mapping that customer once after that's, uh, that that uh, data is spit out by, by Shopify. We're saving that to a variable. And here we're then actually mapping that data to a common model. And then you can see um, that the common model is, is saved in this variable. And we're using this particular variable twice as a source of data that can then be mapped once into NetSuite and once into, um, into a database as well. And I'll show you what this little uh, common model looks like. So if we first look at the data that we get out of um, our Shopify, it's a really long list with lots of little bits of information there. And I go, gosh, I don't really know what to do with all of this. So what I've done is um, 
in my common model, customers to common model, it said, hey, let me instead of have this list, which has lots of different nested bits of information, actually just produce my own contacts JSON. So I can I can do that as JSON, or I can do that as, um, as XML or even CSV and say, what I really need is this information here. Or I can show you in a bit more detail what I've mapped across. So all I really wanted out of uh, Shopify was the customer ID, a first name, last name, full name, some of this other information. What I can also do as part of this, this is where you can then go and apply some of that logic. So um, you can actually within this field, then apply some functionality as well. So you could say things like if this field is empty, put a different field in or, or say, you know, not available or say uh, field entry missing, something like that you can do in here. You can also save this here as a variable and then call uh, an API to apply some additional transformation. Um, okay. Uh, so Dan Daniel. Um, yeah. Yeah. Could you, I mean, that's quite a common use case in Shopify because, yeah. you know, if the customer exists or didn't exist, you can end up with, let's say, phone numbers. Yeah. Um, sometimes they're in one field, but not another. Could you actually show us how we could source the phone number from one field, but if that's empty, source it from a different field? Yeah. So, so one of the things that you could do as part of this, uh, uh, do you know what? I'll let me run this integration first because I want to make sure okay. that I've run that before before we uh, before I change anything around too much and test things out. But the essentially, other question, the, the other question I have, perhaps for later. So Shopify again, that Shopify Plus just allows you four transactions per second. Yep. Um, how how do you manage that? How do you make sure that you're not um, missing customers because you're driving it faster than that? So, so what, what you can do with uh, in, in that regard, Shopify allows you to do something called webhooks. Uh, and the webhook is essentially a, a, a way of calling an API. And that API can then um, pass some data to our platform. So instead of querying this here, we would we would receive an API call, or we can expose this integration as an API call. And what would happen then is that data would uh, would would as soon as it's created, um, Shopify would would call the API. We then store that data and pass it directly into NetSuite, or we can map it through that common model, and uh, and then um, we we can essentially uh, use that that. Um, uh, that data then to be to be passed on. So so the way that you would get around from that is instead of just calling or or, or having a schedule, which where for instance we say, hey, look, uh, set, give me provide a schedule for me that runs every minute or so. Uh, you can essentially say, hey, create, uh, turn this workflow into uh, a, a a webhook capable workflow, which is essentially you expose all of this as an API, um, and then you get uh, using, using Jitterbit. And then um, when that Jitterbit API is called, it can kickstart this integration um, where, where essentially it captures the payload that comes in, which is data that's sent from Shopify, and that then can be mapped forward onto NetSuite or, or database as well. So yeah, that's, sorry, that's, that's kind of, I, I won't ask any more questions for a bit, but yeah, that wasn't what I meant. So when we call Shopify, Shopify uses a leaky bucket algorithm. So the mm -hmm. it will return and tell you if you're keeping within the four requests a second and, and keep in mind there could be other things um requesting information from that shopify instance as well how do you make sure that those you're getting responses and you're keeping within their api limits um I, to be honest that's something that would have to look at in a little bit more detail again that's a very shopify specific question so it's it's something I'm, I'm very happy to pick up and maybe that's something that we can do after the call um i'm, I'm also conscious of of time um but but yeah so it's it's something where you know we we, we adhere fundamentally to the uh the rules and, and guidance that's something like shopify can provide with regards to their api so whatever their api is, uh, is capable of doing we're, we're able to do as well so um again that's that's something I've, I've i've personally not come across before but that's because i haven't worked too much it's, uh, it's totally shopify. fundamental to this use case you've come up with yeah yeah Okay, uh, but again, it's it's something that that um, uh, I've, I've, I just wanted to present a use case that, sure. that shows okay. uh, some data yeah. migration, but certainly that's something we can uh, pick up. Um, again, as as I said earlier in my talk uh, in or at the beginning of the presentation, 
this is just quickly showing how I can run an integration or how quickly I can kickstart an integration between uh, something like Shopify and NetSuite. The refinement of this and actually making this production ready would be considering all those additional factors around uh, 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 leaky bucket algorithms uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. So um, I hope that, that that answers your question to some extent, but I also understand that you'll probably want to pick this up with us um, uh, afterwards as well, and, and, and we would enjoy having that conversation. Um, okay, so um, to to where where was I? So uh, again, uh, some of the things I said. We also have an error handling functionality. Before I, I run this, uh, so you can see here on the right hand side, we have um, different. Um, uh, actions that we can have we can have an on fail or on success action so which is important as well so one of the things that you might want to do is say hey hold on something's gone wrong stop this integration workflow because i don't want to have anything that's that's that doesn't need to be mapped or shouldn't need to be mapped moving forward so th throw th uh, throw something out of sync so you can have error handle uh, handling capability as well in future you will obviously one of the things that you'll be able to do with jitterbit is actually utilize a jitterbit um, message queue as well we can go and persist um in inverted commas that 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 um information until it's uh it's it's taken back off the queue as well so you you will really have that lossless uh integration capability at the moment we offer that through 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 external message queues but again that's something that uh, will be uh, ga with us uh soon as well or you can at the moment uh, write some data to a cache as well within jitterbit for those of you that um that, uh, that again um know, know that terminology as well so what i wanted to show today is um i've got a netsuite instance here just with a customer with with my uh, uh customer fields i'm just going to refresh this so that to make sure that that uh, i don't have to do that in a second but what we'll be able to see at the top here is the latest uh, uh created customer what i then also have is a a shopify um instances is the admin panel as well so just in the back end uh this is running on on a trial but you can see here i've got my customer so i can refresh this as well just so that you can see hey this is just one customer. Um, and uh, what I want to do, like I said, is I want to do a couple of things. I also, and I'll just stop sharing my screen for just a second and share my in, in entire screen, because I also have a database in the background here, which is uh, which you, which hopefully you can, can see as well. And that doesn't have anything in there right now. And so if I now actually go and kickstart this integration workflow, um, I can continue that because I, I've made a couple of changes. But what this will do is it will uh, it has a, a workflow controller here, which essentially says, hey, can you kickstart these two integrations? Uh, you can run integrations or operations as well asynchronously. So I can run one of these integrations without having to run the other. Uh, and what this will then do in, in the background, like I said, it will get the data from uh, from Shopify. It will let me know if there's anything wrong or right with it. Uh, and then it will pass it both to NetSuite uh, and to the database. So if I firstly go and look in that database, we can now see that record that's appeared. So with that, with that address, don't go to that address. That's not actually where I lived. I just had to pick one out of uh, thin air here. And then if I go and refresh uh, the um, NetSuite customer as well, uh, what you'll see is here, here my name then appeared at the top so again coming back to, to to the comments earlier this is at the moment obviously not a production ready workflow but this is something that was set up within about an hour or so where I quickly said hey what do I want to do well fundamentally I want to go and pull some uh, some uh, data out of Shopify which in this instance was a customer I then wanted to map that to a common model and uh, because I mapped it to a common model the list of systems that I can now map this data to uh, is pretty much endless it's whatever you have um, in your in your entitlement but it's it's also whatever you have in terms of your connectors i could also send this to uh, to to salesforce to hubspot to whatever else uh wherever else i need those customers uh to be sent to um the the the, the way that i could make this production ready is to have things like a, a synchronization workflow where essentially if customers are either added in shopify or added in netsuite um or, uh, is is that, that that i can synchronize those across and have those created in in, in both systems um as well so uh i hope uh, that that was helpful. I'm going to stop sharing my screen there for a second um, and await any questions. Thank you, Dan. We'll just give a second for anyone to uh, share any other questions that they've got, either in the chat or if you want to come off mute and ask, please feel free to do so. Uh, Daniel, um, yeah, just coming back to the earlier one, yep. could, if we wanted to source from different fields in Shopify, having the phone number is quite a good example because that 
that does Shopify does seem to populate that in different fields yep. sometimes. How, how would you go about doing that? Is that where you need to drop down into just a bit of query language? Uh, no, you don't. You uh, don't need to do that. What what you can do is um, let me show my screen again. Actually, that that, that that's probably something that's helpful. So. Um, as, as part of that uh, Shopify query, what you obviously have, um, and, and maybe this is what you're referring to here, but you you, you fundamentally um, have several different uh, fields that you can map from. At the moment, I've got one-to-one -one mappings, but what in here I could do is, is I could have something like an if empty statement. So um, if I go actually where my common model is rather, um, if I go into, for instance, the phone number field, I, you, you could utilize a functionality called if empty, so uh, if empty, which uh, is, a, is a function, and I could say, look, if this field is empty, uh, then what other field do I want to provide? So on the right-hand side here, you then have your list of fields. So I could then say, actually, do you know what I want you to provide? I want you to provide this field here instead. So um, that's then uh, it's oh, I, I, that, that's that's how, how how basically I would think that that uh, could work. There's a couple of other things that you could do. You could say, hey, actually, if I'm querying the customer for whatever reason, let me just uh, remove this again. Uh, if I'm querying the, the customer or at the moment, I'm just querying the customer. Now, if I know that there's information that's held within a different query um, from Shopify, what I could actually do instead is I could spit information out through a query. And then instead, instead of just having this uh, written here, here as as phone number wherever I am right here I could also say hey actually what you could do for me is can you save this bit of data as phone number um so in 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 oh, phone let's be proper about this number and what you could then do going forwards is to actually go and access this uh variable across your other workflows as well so as long as um this this workflow has run uh, first, where you're capturing that bit of data downstream, instead of um, writing my phone number in into NetSuite, for instance, where that that's here, I can then simply from the right hand side, uh, under the variables, um, say, hey, use this phone number instead. So that's that's one of the ways that um, that probably have to apply these here. But that's essentially what you can do as well working with variables so that you can say, you know, um, I, you know, you, you probably wouldn't have this instead now, uh, but you can essentially save data to variables. And you have to remember that what, what's happening as part of an integration workflow is that this is executed every single time an integration runs. This entire project that you see, this entire workflow that you see is called. So um, you, you, oh, so, so and, the and, very... that, um, and that sort of script that you were showing us. Yeah. Um, yeah. What is that exactly? Actually, it doesn't look like Jason. Exactly, it's, it's got tags and things, but so this year is uh, so so Jitterbit comes with a purpose-built uh, 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 scripting language or scripting uh, com components. Uh, so we have about a hundred and fifty different functions, which do a lot of uh, uh, simple things for you. Some of the additional things that you can do is you can see. Uh, let me just jump out. You can see these script tags at the end. So this script tag does something very simple, where I'm saying, "Hey, can you just uh, write out the response that, for instance, you're getting off the back?" But I could change the these trans, uh, transformation tags to uh, read uh, JavaScript, and then I could uh, you could then utilize uh, JavaScript in there as well. You, you have to remember that this platform is built for the idea of low code, no code. So we obviously don't want you writing heavy and complex integrations in there. The things that you could do is, is we want you to do most of the work that you have to as part of this transformation um, uh, uh, component. The Some of the other things that you can do here, therefore, is to have things like uh, adding conditional nodes. So you can actually filter data down at the transformation level or depending on what your um, what the, uh, the the different system is is capable of, is actually you can write some of those queries or, or, or specify some of those queries within the different connectors. So, for instance, for for um, uh, for uh, Salesforce, you you're, you're able to go and 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 filter as part of the query activity where you can write some SOAP and and apply. So where uh, where where don't, don't take any names or don't bring back any customers where the first name is Daniel, for instance, because we don't like Daniel. Uh, so we, we want to just take everyone else. So there's stuff that you can do as well. Um, I, I 
where, where I try to, or what I try to show today, and again, the, uh, it feels to me, too that some of the questions that you're having are, are very excited, hopefully, about the platform. So we'd, we'd love to have a follow-up conversation with you around it. But essentially what I wanted to show today is, hey, this is how quickly you can build something, but this is not just um, the, the, the be and end all of it. We, we don't just want to build simple work uh, uh, flows. We want to make sure that you can still implement um, and apply the business rules and logics that you have that govern your, your company, which should be and usually are very complex, which is what makes different businesses unique. But we want to do it in such a way where we ab abstract that complexity on the top level or on, on, on what you see on the screen and allow you to effectively build um, different integrations. Um, so uh, hopefully that, that answers your questions uh, or your questions so far. I, I know that we, we, we've hit 11 o'clock, um, but you know, Feel free to reach out to us uh, afterwards as well, uh, and and we, we'd love to continue your conversation if there are any other questions. I've got one more. Do you, yeah. do you have an out of the box Shopify and NetSuite um, connect uh, integration? Uh, we, we we do have several. Yeah, so uh, on on yeah. the marketplace, uh, NetSuite. And then if we fail to buy Shopify, we have a difference. Uh, we have things that we call integration processes and uh, and integration recipe or process templates and integration recipes. Process templates are holistic processes where we're, for instance, uh, having a NetSuite Shopify order to fulfillment uh, process templates, which packages several different uh, projects up, or you can just have the single different uh, use cases here. So, uh, and, the, and the way that you would do that is by simply clicking here, deciding what environment that you want, um, providing it a name. Uh, let me just make this really clear so that I, I can find this easier, but then call it test. Um, and I just copy this name so I can search on it. I then click create project. Uh, it then pulls that metadata, which, which is actually a JSON document that describes the entire project and um, pulls that into your environment, which takes a couple of seconds. Uh, and then once, once that project has been pulled into your, your environment, you can then go to Cloud Studio here, uh, and then uh, I can go and search on, um, on that particular project. Bear with me, my bandwidth isn't brilliant at the moment, but uh, if I then search for this and I can view and edit this, then what it will give to you is a uh, is, is a ready-made integration workflow, which looks a little bit more production ready, which has things like searching for customer first, writing it to temporary storage, and then sending it to, to Shopify. Now, this is a bit of a, a, a reverse uh, of, of what I did earlier with, with uh, and, and probably a little bit tidier. It does utilize a little bit more scripting, which, which uh, it doesn't really need to, but fundamentally, we, we do have those templates as well. That, that's super helpful. Thank you. Um, any other questions from anyone? Um, otherwise, like I said, is you know, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, we love talking about this sort of stuff and uh, would, would obviously love to help you guys understand how um, we can build uh, you know, scalable and maintainable integration landscapes with yourselves. Okay, well, um, Daniel, thank you very much. It was uh, very informative. Uh, thanks, Maria, as well, for your um, input at the start. If anyone does have any further questions or if anyone wants to find out more, get a demo booked or anything like that, please uh, get in touch with us here at Brightbridge and we can arrange that for you. Um, looking forward to our next webinar. Uh, the next one in the series is going to be with uh, Workero. Um, they will uh, provide various different integrations with that uh, Outlook um, with your NetSuite. And that's going to be held on 11 o'clock on the 2nd of November. We'll send some emails out with details on how to register for that shortly. Um, otherwise, uh, thanks very much for attending today. And uh, hopefully look forward to seeing you all again on the next uh, webinar in November. Thank you, Gary. Take care, everyone.